Now then, how are you doing? I hope you're well. I love a bit of line and wash me, particularly when it comes to sketching. Well, since time and the weather are not always sympathetic to our needs in a sketching situation, it's a great technique for simply getting the basic information down in the sketchbook as efficiently as possible. Well, let's take a look at how I might capture such information with a scene from Langdale in the Lake District. This is Great Langdale, which winds its way lazily through, not surprisingly, Great Langdale in the Lake District. Roughly halfway between the villages of Chapel Style and Elterwater, the beck curves and widens into a particularly attractive section, popular with picnickers dog walkers and paddlers, those wishing to cool off in the hot summer months. I love the rocks here. They punctuate the river and add extra character with the backdrop of trees and some lovely reflections in the shallow water. I'm thinking it would make a great line and wash sketch. Where to start? Well, this is a sketch, so I want to dive straight in there without any preliminary drawing. Mixing up some paints and throwing it at the paper is as good a place to start as any. And the first colour up is Prussian Blue. I want to begin by establishing some rough shapes, and the sky, if it's visible in the scene, is generally a good starting point. Well, I should add that I'm applying paint to dry paper, so those shapes are sporting hard edges. To prevent it all just being solid colour, I'm softening parts of it off with a damp brush, which not only varies it, makes it look a little more visually interesting, but I'm also getting something that looks vaguely like clouds, which I rather like. The next colour up is cadmium yellow, and I'm working quickly so that the two colours will hopefully play nicely together on the paper. Again, I'm still working with rough shapes, so I'm using the yellow to establish a vague impression of trees. In fact, my intention is to try and keep things as loose as possible, and only plan on developing the trees so far. I'll be happy with a rough impression. Of course, we have a river in the foreground, which means bringing those colours down into it as reflections. Nothing too precise, though. This isn't a tranquil lake. It's moving water, so I'm not looking for anything too mirror-like. One thing I am doing, though, is leaving a few random highlights that can be turned into rocks later. The last colour to be thrown into the fray, at least for the moment, is Burnt Umber. I'm using it to add some warmth to the scene, but in particular I'm applying it to the areas of shallow water in the immediate foreground. Well, as before, I'm working around a few random highlights that I hope to turn into rocks, but and this is an important point as far as a line and wash is concerned or at least as far as the way I like to paint them is concerned. This is going to be a line and wash, which means that much of the heavy lifting when it comes to the definition of precise details is going to be done by the ink pen, which will be coming right up in a moment. For me, line and wash works best when it is an equal collaboration between the two disciplines. Neither the watercolour nor the ink should be dominant. 
Instead, they should preferably take hints from each other and support each other. A healthy fusion of styles, if you like. With all that in mind, you'll see that now I've reached for the ink pen, I'm using it to draw out the rocks. Wherever possible, I will take hints from the previous watercolour, but if the highlights aren't in precisely the right place or the right size and shape, then I'll draw them how I think they should be anyway, irrespective of what's happening on the watercolour wash beneath. Does this make sense? I hope so. The thing is, when the ink pen and the watercolour don't line up accurately, then their offset nature actually improves the result, in my opinion, and helps to maintain that loose impression I'm looking for. So just to recap, at this point all I've done is lay down a loose, impressionistic, almost abstract underwash, and then I've drawn the key elements out with an ink pen. With these things established I can start to build up my scene, which means switching back to the watercolour and applying further washes. Well, here I've mixed up cadmium yellow and cadmium red and I'm developing the trees a little. By that I mean that I'm blocking them in and also bringing the colour down into the water area as reflections. Well, I've now got my ink drawing as a guide and I'm taking hints from it, carefully painting around the foreground rocks, for example. As I speed things up just a tad, you can see that I'm also randomly softening some of my brush marks off to blend them into the surrounding wash. And as I do this, a couple of things come to mind. Firstly, you may be wondering why bother with the initial loose wash if all I'm going to do is paint over it. But if you look closely, you'll see that the initial wash is still there, contributing to the overall impression, albeit in a subtle way. And the other thing is, even though this is a line and wash, the normal considerations of watercolour still apply. I want to call them rules, but of course there are no rules. And by that, I mean that primarily we work from light to dark. So here I've mixed burnt umber, cadmium yellow together to make a golden brown colour. It's still relatively light, not too intense, but it's enough to enable me to push the scene forward gradually. A line and wash painting can be approached in several different ways. The most conventional, and I suppose you could say traditional, way is to draw your scene out first with the ink pen and then apply colour to it in the form of watercolour washes. A popular alternative to that is to half finish a watercolour and use the ink pen to emphasise certain elements by drawing around them. Well, for me, the ideal balance is where the two work together as a kind of fusion, which is what I'm trying to achieve here. And one way in which I can control that balance is to alternate between the two. So watercolour first, then the ink pen, then back to the watercolour. 
And a final blast with the ink pen to tidy things up. Four alternating stages with the option to dip in at will at the end to make any minor adjustments as required. I also want to add that line and wash is great for sketching, enabling you to lay down ideas quickly and efficiently. And I just want to reiterate before anybody gives me a hard time over the fact that I'm going to leave my trees understated, that this is essentially me playing around with ideas and isn't meant to be a complete finished painting. So at this point, I'm just coming to the end of the second watercolour stage. Here, I've mixed up a light grey from French Ultramarine and Burnt Umber. In fact, I think I dropped a small amount of Alizarine Crimson in there too, just for subtle warmth. And I'm applying it to all the dark areas within the scene. Now, obviously, it's not super dark at this stage, but again, this is me trying to maintain some form of control over the process. It generally isn't a good idea to dive into the really dark, intense values too early on. Aim to get there gradually, otherwise it's unlikely to end well. I'm back with the ink pen. And you can see that I'm using it to develop the finer details, basically tidying things up and tying up loose ends. Well, I quite enjoy this bit, but then I was a drawer long before I was a painter, so these things tend to come naturally to me. Ink can be a bit daunting, though, if you're not confident with it. Now, I'm using a pen that has black, waterproof, permanent ink. In other words, it can't easily be erased. Well, errors, therefore, are best incorporated into the design of the painting somehow, or hidden by other darker features. If you are a bit nervous of your drawing abilities, then one thing I do recommend is to lightly draw a few guidelines out in pencil beforehand. They can always be erased later, and no one needs to be any the wiser. So finally, we come to the darkest, most intense tones, which I'm mixing from French Ultramarine and Burnt Umber, with a small amount of alizarine crimson added, just to warm it up slightly. Well, needless to say, these are the elements within the sketch that I want to make the most impact. In watercolour, we work from light to dark, so the darkest tones often, but not always, tend to be our finishing touches. Well, as you can see, I've started by applying it to the dark areas within the trees, primarily along the base of the trees, but they also extend down into the water. And the other thing you'll see me doing is softening some of those brush marks off with a damp brush upwards mostly to try and blend them into the existing wash. Now, as I say, these elements are what I like to think of as accents or dramatic punctuation within the scene. As such, I'm aiming to apply them to the parts of the painting that I feel are most deserving. The edges of the rocks where they meet the water's surface, for example, are quite dark and meet the criteria I'm looking for. I think it's worth saying, by the way, that in the context of a line and wash painting, we do have a choice of whether to create our darkest tones using paint or ink. Personally, I tend to prefer using watercolour for that, but there are occasions, particularly when an object appears as a solid shape and doesn't graduate, 
when blocking it in with the ink pen is entirely justified. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, then please do hit the like button. It really does make a difference. And if you're not already a subscriber, then well, maybe consider subscribing or even becoming a studio member of my YouTube channel and get instant access to the full length versions of all my demonstrations, complete with downloadable notes. Well, I am currently in the process of uploading my entire back catalogue, so there's a lot for studio members to explore. Oh, there are other sign-up options which you'll find in the description below. In the meantime, I'll see you next time. Take care. <music>